want more artists turn to recurring crowdfunding sources like Patreon in order to be paid for what they love doing most. Specific content can also be created through its Ko-fi alternative or the French TP. Crowdfunding can be such a valuable source of income, but you need to be aware of the fact that it's quite the full-time job and requires more time and work that lots of budding artists underestimate in the beginning, and myself included. <laughs> I mean, especially when starting out, you only have a handful of supporters. So if you over deliver, your audience will be happy, but you will burn out and work way too much for what you're being paid. And you'll have a hard time working on other things you should do and that could pay more, like finding clients and doing commissions. Now, under deliver and you'll have time for your other projects, but your patrons might feel that they don't get enough value for their money and they leave. How can you find the right balance between value and time? Here are some common rewards you can use for your audience. And just before we go on, I recommend you to watch last week's comparison of Patreon and Kofi, which have different business models where different rewards can apply. So you'll find the link in the description and make sure to also subscribe for more content to grow from art to business every Tuesday at 18 hours. When starting out, the most important thing will be to optimize your time. Give quality and value, but without spending too much time on it. And the easiest way to do this would be to use things you do in your everyday life already. For instance, if you create lots of illustrations, you could turn them into monthly phone or desktop wallpapers, record your art process and share the real-time and or time-lapse video, share the digital PSD file, create a step-by-step -step with different process pictures, or combine all your sketches into a monthly sketchbook PDF. Those are usually the things that take the least time away from your regular schedule, and as people are interested in your work, behind the scenes work quite well. Now, maybe you've already doodled somewhere in public and people watched you. It can be at school or artist alley, and usually the comment that often comes back is it's so fascinating to see a picture come to life. Creating from scratch is common sense for us illustrators, but can look like magic to us. Others, so show them. Besides, I'm sure there will be people looking up to you, which brings me to the next part, teaching. Many artists have started teaching on Patreon. While it offers more value and can thus be priced higher, it also takes much more time. So let's see the different options from the least to most time consuming. Commented step-by-step -step PDFs are the easiest alternative as you can reuse your regular illustrations and just add a comment on the process. How much you want to write is up to you, surface leveled or totally in depth. For a better understanding, you can also copy it with a video on that specific illustration. Mini tutorial sheets can come in various different forms. You can have rough sheets on how to draw a certain topic or references for anatomy, characters, hair, without any explanations. Usually this takes a little more time as you'll often need to write and draw new content for that specific topic. Voice-over videos can be interesting for aspiring artists who want to understand your process, why and how you do what you do. If you're good at freestyling, you can comment while filming or record and voice-over separately. As a rule of thumb, I'd say that for editing, just count in twice as much time as the duration of your video. So if you've recorded 40 minutes of footage, count around one hour to edit and review it. Video online courses are the most interesting as they dive deep into a specific topic but it takes a tremendous amount of time. If you're serious about teaching well and getting results, you'll most probably research the topic even if you already know it, try out exercises to see what works best so that you can easily explain things and be sure they're not too difficult. 
then you either freestyle and draw or write a script before to cover everything your audience needs to know and then film and edit. In my case, I'd also add a full printable PDF recap and a translation so that all my videos were French audio with English subtitles. And to give you an estimation, it usually took me a full intensive week to do a single 10 minutes drawing class and I eventually stopped because it was too much. So as interesting as this one can seem, I definitely recommend you to wait for a larger audience to make this profitable. Some creators also turn to physical goods, usually priced a little higher. Here it is important to remember that you will need to invest money beforehand to get the goods and ship them to your patrons and that printing companies often refuse small quantities or if they do, the price is extremely high. If you can, I'd suggest either to look for local printing companies in your area or if you're dead serious about it, invest in machines to do it yourself. So here are a few ideas. In such a specialty club, lots of artists offer something like a monthly print, postcard, sticker, pin club, depending on the specialty. In the long run, it can be a good investment to have a quality printer or sticker machine, especially if you want to print smaller quantities on a regular basis. Monthly goodies bundles are also appreciated, especially with people who like surprises. Here you can either create new stuff every month or use your existing shop and con supplies. Two things to watch out though, some of your biggest fans might buy everything you do at cons already and will get lots of doubles if you offer things from your regular assortment. So on the other hand, you need to be sure that you'll be able to produce new illustrations every month and get them soon enough to the manufacturer where you should always count um yeah let's say at least around two weeks before you can get your delivery sometimes delays happen so better take this into consideration Yearly book or big projects are interesting as they only need to be done once a year. For instance, if you know you're publishing one manga or art book every year, you can gift a signed copy to your patrons. No extra work and expenses here, as it's usually something you're intending to sell online or at conventions anyway, and as it's indeed a lot of work, your patrons will be patient and happy when they get it. For instance, you can also couple this bigger reward with regular insights and sketches behind the scenes to keep them informed. For your biggest fans, your original art is like the holy grail and they will preciously collect and guard it. As it's much as it's much more personal and unique, you can price it way higher. Now onto commissions, some illustrators offer a cheaper commission every month on their Patreon, like a portrait for instance, others ask people to pledge for several months to unlock a full detailed artwork. Consider how many commissions you want and can get done within a month and limit the tiers accordingly. original art and sketches. Now, if you're creating a lot and don't know what to do with all these pieces of paper, you could also offer some limited spots to get an original sketch every month. Basically, it's the same concept than surprise packages, only that it contains a more valuable artwork. Of course, there are also lots of other things you can set up. Some like to hang out with their patron streams, some private live streams, offer a supporter-only Discord chat, give discount coupons on their online shop, see what works for you and your audience. And remember, nothing is set in stone. If a word doesn't work or is too overwhelming, you can change it as long as you communicate honestly with your supporters and explain why you'd like to stop or change. Communication is key and they're here because they love what you do so they'll understand if you take the time to explain openly.
And now I'd love to hear from you. Do you have a Patreon page and what works have you already tried or would like to try? Or do you prefer a simpler business model like coffee where you only have a private newsfeed? Remember to have a look at last week's video for a full comparison of Patreon and coffee. And next week we'll dive deeper into physical products which you might use for artist alley sales or as surprises for your Patreon supporters and we'll talk more specifically about what bubble. So if you're interested make sure to be there on Tuesday 18 hours and also like this video and subscribe to the channel so that I know this content is useful to you. And in the meanwhile for more tips and insights head over to Instagram at myartbizacademia and we'll see each other next week. Bye!